your 360's shifting feels a little lazy or you're burning through clutches, this is the one upgrade that actually changes how the car drives. Challenge your Dolly TCU. So today, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cover who needs it, why it works, compatible donor TCUs across Ferrari and Maserati and other vehicles, and what you'll need to set it up after the swap. So if you're new here to the channel, guys, please consider liking and subscribing. Throw some comments below if you have any questions. I'm always happy to help or answer where I can. Also, I apologize, but you know, the scenery changed back here. But I'm in a holding pattern, as many of you know, and I'm moving and I'm waiting basically for a home to be built. So I'm just thankful I even have a garage that I can work in. So with all that being said, guys, let's go ahead and get started. What I've got here is a reflashed TCU. This is not necessarily from a uh, 360. This could be from a Maserati or another vehicle. I don't know exactly which one it came out of. However, we'll go over that stuff in a little bit. But what I do want to point out about this is if you take a look here, you have this. This is the hardware revision number of a TCU, okay? This tells you like the processor, the RAM, the stuff that's inside this thing. You will want to know this when you look at your own inside your car, so just be aware of that. But basically, that's the stuff you want to look at when you look for this thing. Now, where this is located is actually, and I'm, I'll open my car and I'll show you guys. If you open the passenger side here, and you'll have to excuse kind of the mess that I have. If you move the seat forward, if I can move mine forward. Okay, so if you move it forward like this, right, this panel right here has to come off. There are a few screws and you just need to use a Phillips screwdriver to take that off, okay? But underneath here is the TCU. It's mounted underneath here. Before you do anything on this car, when you, when you remove those electronics or anything like that, you wanna go ahead and turn the battery switch off in the front trunk, frunk, whatever you wanna call it. Um, it's located generally, like if you pop this, it's usually located like right about here. And you just turn the knob, all the power's cut from the battery to the rest of the car, basically. The reason you do this is because if you're disconnecting electronics and plugging them back in, especially computers, which can be sensitive to voltage changes or if something goofy happens, you just don't wanna take the chance because you don't wanna fry anything, right? Just be aware of that, okay? The TCU that I have here that I just showed you guys just a second ago, right here, I actually got this from a member on Ferrari Chat. Basically, he has the ability to go ahead and reflash these, and I need to ask him if it's okay to put his name out there. I'm not gonna say it in the video here, but I may update the video details below later, and I'll let you guys know. Um, I'm gonna go through and ask him before, because I don't wanna just put his name on blast, uh, and you know, and potentially get him in trouble if he's not supposed to be technically doing this, but for whatever it's worth, um, there's a guy on Ferrari chat on the forums that actually will go ahead and, and basically either sell you one that's flashed or if you send yours in, he can actually reflash it to use the Challenge Stradale mapping. So the question really becomes, do you really need this TCU? So the early cars, the 99s and many 2000s shipped with the first gen TCUs, they don't let you directly set the PIS, which is basically the clutch bite point, more or less, point of initial slip and they can't take later maps. So from 2001, Ferrari rolled out a revised TCU line from part number 189542. Onward, you can use and adjust the PIS and you could also run the Challenge Stradale software. Basically pre-01, there's no PIS set, rougher low speed creep more or less, and then 01 plus, you get basically the adjustability of the PIS, faster mapping and it's updatable, so it, it's better shifting more or less. Normally, kind of the general rule of thumb is Higher part number generally equals faster shifts and less slip and adjustability with the PIS. Another very, very, very nice thing to have is when you upgrade the TCU on the earlier ones, the 99s and 2000s, to one that's compatible with the Challenge Stradale mapping, you also get the ability to use scan tools, aftermarket scan tools. If you've ever hooked up a scan tool, and I tend to use the, um, the Foxwell NT530, it's, it's a little bit older. I think they've got newer models through Foxwell now, however, they do have specific uh, modules like Ferrari and Maserati modules and things like that that you can buy additional and install software and be able to talk to the computers on here, transfer the TCU and both ECUs in the car. You'll notice if you have one of those that when you try to connect it, the scan tool to it, that it won't actually communicate with the F1 computer if you have a 99 or 2000. That's because specifically um, it's the older TCU hardware. So when you do upgrade it, 
you do unlock basically the ability to have diagnostic capability. And also you are able to bleed the um, hydraulic uh, actuator that's on there. So the, the F1 system, all the fluid also get the ability to go ahead and do gear uh, or F1 shifting relearn. The car will basically go through shifting with the actuator and more or less take out the slack or readjust so that it can basically shift as clean and as fast as possible. You get quite a few things uh, in addition to the PIS adjustment. So basically you get PIS adjustment, you get the ability to read codes, you can bleed the uh, F1 pump and the actuator and system in there, and you can also go ahead and do gear relearns. All of that's kind of necessary if you've got an F1. So that's not something that was ever really that you could do with aftermarket scan tools when these cars first came out. They were kind of proud of not letting people be able to talk to these things and use them and that you would have to bring them in for service. So the earlier models, they didn't really conform to like the standard OBD2 settings or the, the pinouts and the plug. I think somewhere beyond 2001 or a little bit later than that, they kind of retroactively went back and actually like had campaigns where they would go through and add a few wires or ground wires or repin a few things on the OBD2 port. There isn't really any sort of like court ruling or anything about this stuff. Really kind of what prompted this was um, the right to repair, which car makers, you know, were required to kind of provide standardized repair and diagnostic info to independence. Basically that opened, you know, everything up steadily to, you know, aftermarkets to be able to use tools and access diagnostic stuff. Challenge for Dolly TCU is still a Magneti Morelli TCU. So basically it's the same hydraulics, it's the same pump, uh, it's the same pump, well, not the same pump, but same pump pressure window, more or less. Uh, really the magic is the smarter software, which is basically quicker clutch movements and more aggressive shift logic, especially at higher RPMs, right? Um, so you're not really cranking like the pump pressure on this thing or anything to make it, you know, shift any faster or harder or whatever. You're really just making better use of the pump pressure, you know, with additional programming and logic. One thing to be very, very aware of, when you go ahead and swap a Challenge for Dolly TCU into the car, um, basically it's designed to work with the Challenge for Dolly, the tune that's on the ECUs. So in the car, you've got, let me show you back here, an ECU that's back here and one that is also back here as well. Basically what happens is the, the ECUs and the TCU, they all communicate together. When you go ahead and you actually uh, put the Challenge for Dolly TCU in there, if you only have the factory tune, basically what happens is if you drive it around not in sport mode, it's just, it drives a little clunky, okay? It's not ideal. Now, if you flip it into sport mode, it actually drives better for sure. However, just be aware that like the ECU tune and the Challenge Sir Dolly TCU tune are gonna be mismatched, okay? You will probably need to go ahead and get a hold of like uh, 360 Trev to go ahead and reflash the ECU so that everything's kind of all in sync. It all just kind of works together as a package. Now, that's not to say that you can't just put a Challenge Sir Dolly TCU in your car and drive it. You absolutely can put one in there and it does make a difference. But I figured I'd throw that in there just so that you guys would understand that it is kind of a package deal. You should do all of them all at once. However, if you can only pull off the Challenge Street Alley TCU, I would say leave it in sport mode and drive it that way. And then eventually you're gonna need to upgrade the ECUs and reflash them. Okay, so what hardware, right? So what hardware can be reflashed? Ferrari 360s, obviously. Um, there are some models that can be reflashed. I'll make a list below because I can't remember all these numbers and all these hardware revisions, but there's also the 575 Marinello. Some of those, the later ones, I believe can be reflashed. Uh, Maserati 4200s and Grand Sports, the Cambio Corsas, those, there's some hardware there. Also, I believe the F430s, uh, the 612, and I think even the Enzo as well. Probably nobody's gonna be pulling a TCU out of an Enzo, I don't believe so, but it's possible. It has hardware that is compatible that can be reflashed. Also, oddly enough, there's some Lamborghini models as well. They use some Magneti Morelli stuff. So I'll go ahead and in the description below, I'll go ahead and see if I can, I can put up a list of some of the compatible hardware and uh, the hardware revisions and the model numbers that are on the TCUs and uh, the cars that they can you can get them from. I don't have any other electronics here that I can show you how to like bench reflash this thing. Although I absolutely would love to learn how to do it because I love tinkering with that kind of stuff and given my background, I wouldn't mind doing it. So if any of you out there know how to do that um, or have the tools or can point me in a direction, please leave a comment. I'd love to see that stuff because it kind of gets my gears turning and I, I kind of tend to tinker with stuff like that. Now, one thing to note real quick before we do this my shifts might actually be a little bit quicker i don't know but i do have a gte or gt engineering 
um, actuator on this car. I didn't put it on this car. I got the car and it already was installed. So it may actually shift a little harder or faster potentially. I don't know. With all that garbage out of the way, guys, and all that background and history, let's jump into this thing and install this TCU. Let's get started. to swap the TCU in. There's really not much to it. It's just pulling the panel off, pulling the old one out, swapping the new one in and putting everything back together. What I'm gonna show you here, guys, is I've just put uh, the power back on, obviously in the front, and we're gonna go ahead and hook up the scan tool, which I already have hooked up here. It's a Foxwell NT530, okay? And I'm gonna start, well, I'm not gonna start the car, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna turn the ignition on and um, you can hear the pump priming in the back, probably. Hit the button on the fob. And then what I'm gonna do here is show you, uh, I go through Ferrari here, this module that's on here, go all the way down to the F131 360 Modena. And we're gonna go to control modules. So we wanna do, let's try a second version. There we go, second version is the one, okay. You can come in here and read the ECU information. Let's see what it has. Uh, so there's the ID. That's the hardware or the or the ECU or I'm sorry, TCU module number. Um, software version EA A5110 ISO code. Okay. Um, let's read the codes. Can error code, break error. Those are probably missed. Those are probably just phantom codes. They probably just need to be cleared. Um, we can clear those real quick. Ignition is on and engine not running, yes. DTCs, yep. Okay, code's cleared. If we go back, let's read them. No fault codes, great. Okay, so special functions. If you come down here to the bottom, there's clutch configuration, point of initial slippage, bleeding of the actuator, and engagement selection bleeding. So there's quite a few things you can do here. Um, also under active tests, you've got the self-learning, the one at the very top. What this is gonna do is it's gonna cycle through all the gears here and you'll see it on the dash and I'll show you guys the indicator, but it's gonna go through and actuate and go through all of the gears to make sure that everything is basically recalibrated, so to speak. So uh, let's go ahead and do that real quick. So if I hit F3, it's gonna start. And then it says start the activation one. So let's hit F1. And you can see the indicator here, it's changing. And you might be able to hear there in the background, it's shifting through there. Let me get out and show y'all. So you can hear the pump cycling and the actuator going through the learn process. So we're gonna go ahead and do that, let that finish and do its thing. Um, and then ultimately what I've gotta go ahead and do, I gotta bleed the actuator. And I need to cycle all the fluid out of there anyways, because it's probably pretty freaking old. So there is that. Okay, so Activision complete, everything's done. It's back in neutral. Uh, so if I hit F3 and go back, and if I go back again and again, there's special functions. So obviously you can do clutch configuration. The PIS right here is really, a, it's the clutch bite point more or less, like I mentioned. So if you go through here, it's set at 4295. 
that's what's set on this thing when I initially got it. That's kind of like an in-between, like the car should drive like that. However, we may need to adjust it as we drive the car and figure out, oh, maybe it needs to be a little bit more, a little bit less. It just depends. Uh, every car is going to be slightly a little bit different. So we'll, we'll play with that when we get there. Other than that, the clutch bleeding, the actuator, we're going to have, like I mentioned, we're going to have to do that. And I've got all the fluid here and I'll show you here in just a second what I picked up. So let me turn this off. Let me get out of the car and I'll show you the fluid. What I have here is I've got the old TCU and you can see the mine was uh, CFC 201 F.03. This hardware can't be reflashed, all right? It's it's 2000. Uh, mine is 185301. So that's the reason why we swapped this thing out. This thing's basically useless. You can't really do anything with this. You can't change the clutch bite point, the PIS. You can change some of the parameters. You can only really do that stuff with an SD2 or an SD3. The fluid I decided to use for the F1 system um, comes highly recommended by Recombi America. So um, you can't get the original stuff anymore, but Pentosin ATF 44, it's synthetic. Um, other people will use Redline. There's a couple things you can use out there, guys. You pick your own poison, really. Um, I'm only going with this because it's the closest next up recommended thing to the factory fluid that was in there. So I wanna get something that's kind of close to that. Guys, if you have recommendations on that stuff, throw it in the comments, share with everybody else. Um, this is just what I'm gonna happen to end up using um, because you can't get the, the original stuff anymore. So before we can actually go ahead and bleed the F1 system on this car, there's a few things we need to do. Uh, some panels and things have to come off before I can even do that. Uh, let me kind of show you what I'm talking about. Basically, this panel is going to have to come off here. There's actually a bleed nipple on the back of this hydraulic block. There's also, you're probably not going to be able to see it, but right about here, there is um, a bleed nipple on the, um, the block there as well, uh, where you can crack that loose and let fluid out down there. Also on the actuator itself, there's three screws on the back side. I might go ahead and take the actuator off and do that as well so I get the whole thing just kind of all in one shot. Before I can really do that though, I've got to get this thing up in the air and to make my life a lot easier, if I took the under tray off the car, I can get at everything pretty easy. Also with the, the exhaust that's gonna go on this thing, it's gonna make more sense for me to take the under tray off anyways. And if I'm doing exhaust, um, I've got to lift this thing up here, uh, take the wheel off to get to some panels here so that I can get to bolts here and then just a little bit over there that will allow me to take the rear bumper off on both sides. So it's gonna be kind of a little bit of a process to go ahead and get this thing up in the air and get some of this stuff off. But once I get all that stuff off, it's prepped for me to bleed the actuator in the F1 system basically, and then also do the exhaust uh, in a later video. So there's also another part that I need uh, and I figured I would just do it while I was in there. Um, shout out to Eric Goodkind of Goodkind Designs. Um, he pointed out that there's actually a um, filter in the uh, power solenoid, like power block area. And it's just a little $12 like strainer basket filter. And basically a lot of people just don't even know it's there. I didn't even know it was there. Shout out to him for actually pointing that out. Um, I've actually got to probably go run over to his shop and pick, pick one up because Ferrari basically is on vacation right now in the summer and nobody seems to have it in stock. So kind of is what it is. Obviously when we bleed the system, we wanna make sure we get all the air bubbles out, but I need to go ahead and make sure I clean out and swap out everything I need to. So that also includes that filter. I think I'm gonna call it for now, guys. I think that uh, we'll go ahead and disassemble some of this stuff in the next video. But for now, um, that's how you basically install a TCU on one of these. And that's uh, what's kind of all involved in kind of the background. If you guys have questions, just throw them below and I'll see if I can answer them. I'll also, like I said, I'll put that information about the hardware revisions and um, the part numbers for the TCUs that can be used in the cars um, that they come from. Um, I'll catch you guys on the next one.